Uh, that's awesome. More coffee. Thank you. We're uh, we're good. There's some headphones. Oh, headphones, and uh, we'll just we'll start uh, whenever. It sounds great uh, in here. It's like a acoustic. I'll probably leave in a few minutes. It's a it's an acoustic. Uh, All right. Oh, you can sound. say things. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's very. Uh, that's all part of the uh, ambiance. No, the. Uh, it sounds good. No, yeah, so nice and clear. Like talk down into it. Yeah. Because like, I boosted it up. So it sounds cool, eh? Yeah. Sounds the, good. It's the secret of a, a podcast uh, is to make it sound good. Doesn't matter what you say. Like anything. Well, that's in life. good because it sure as hell ain't gonna look good. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, two-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Pro Bowler, my good friend Mark Mateo Stepnoski is here in his house on my podcast. Thanks for doing this. It's a great combination. Yes. My house to your podcast. It is good. That's good. This is outstanding to be here with you, Hats. Oh, unbelievable. Been looking forward to it. Yes, me too, for sure. And Mateo's not really your middle name, but you just explained to me why it's your son's middle name. It is in Spanish. Oh, it is in Spanish. If we were in Matthew. If we were in Spain right now. Which we should be at some point today. <laughs> then you could call me Mateo. Tijuana. But his is spelled different. Two A's. Yes. And that's because uh, you explained it to me. It's uh, you can remember how to spell it. I don't remember a little exactly. ancient Egyptology. Oh, yes, yes, for sure. And we slipped a little Egyptian in yeah. there with the Spanish, and that was the truth, right? Yes, and the truth will set you free. Yeah, that's very good. So, you know, even though he's eight years old and never tells the truth, at least it's in his middle name. Isn't that interesting? I find that age, like my uh, my uh, youngest son, 10, 11 years old, like is completely comfortable with lying about everything all oh, the time. Oh, it's a habit. Yeah. But at least when he's older, he can literally tell people, truth is my middle name. Oh, my God. That's genius. <laughs> a little marketing in your naming of your offspring. That's a really great idea. Did you think of that afterwards or before? Before. Wow. Yeah. When we were thinking about names. Truth is my middle name. I could you could get you could do anything in life, right? <laughs> Hopefully it'll take him far. Yeah. So Erie, uh, Pennsylvania, the uh, home of True Genius. No, it's not True Genius. It's uh, the documentary that we talked about with the guy who blew off his uh, his head. Yeah, the based on a true story from Erie. Yes, from yeah. a couple decades ago. Oh wow. Yeah the uh, the incident at the pizza shop. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, what's the, Brandy? What's the name of that documentary? Evil Genius on Netflix. Yeah, that was crazy. That kind of brought some bad publicity to Erie. Or, and, but, but not to outweigh the amazing publicity that Mark Stepnowski's uh, birthplace has uh, given it. What, uh, so born in the early 50s? 60, is it 66? 67. 67? Yes. Born uh, yeah, the year of the summer of love. Oh, wow. So that's how you were uh, consummated? Well, I was born conceived? in January. So it doesn't so, work out. Yeah, shortly thereafter. It's always uh, it's always weird to think back, uh, you know, nine months to see what why your parents were having sex. Mm -hmm. uh, mine would have been uh, a Christmas party. So like I was, I'm August twenty uh, first. So if you go back nine months, it's roughly just before Christmas. So you're an eggnog baby. Yeah, I'm an eggnog baby. <laughs> that would explain a few things. Yeah, <laughs> eggnog rum and eggnog baby for sure. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. So you're the youngest of, uh, you're the youngest, right? Yeah. Of three children. Yes. Lovely brothers and sister, brother and sister. Yeah, yeah, one of each. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that's when, when you start playing football, how does that work? How does that fit in? Because I know in Canada, people start a lot in high school, like me, but I think you're in the United States of America. Is, is, is it more like Canada there? You started later or, or you start I early? I started in fourth grade. That's early? Yeah. That's pretty early. Yeah, I think it was nine. Oh, wow. Yeah, they actually snuck me in a year early. Wow. Because so, I was a big kid. Yeah. You know, big for my age, yeah, and yeah. I wanted to play. Interesting. So they actually snuck me in a year early. Because people do that in hockey here, for sure. They yeah. try to do stuff like yeah. that, and that's like football is the same there, I guess. Right? And I was, it was just, you know, it was just JV football. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you weren't supposed to start until uh, fifth grade. Wow. Uh, it was for fifth and sixth graders. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this because your brother played football? He didn't play till later. He did play, but okay. not until later. Okay. He didn't play till high school. Okay. <clears throat> but I was just, my, my father was uh, a coach at the school. He wasn't my coach. Mm. He coached the varsity. Mm -hmm. um, but the JV coaches, they kind of just decided to sneak me in there. 
That's yeah, awesome. Because I wanted to play, and they said, well, he's big enough. Yeah, and, he'll be in the NFL you know, someday. He's old <laughs> enough. So, uh, yeah, and we can take credit for it. Yeah, yeah. We got him started. They, well, they just they so, get it right uh, now. You just gave it to them. I think they just kind of, you know, winged it, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, no one said anything. Uh-huh. No one cared. So I actually started a year early. Oh, that explains the success then for sure. Put your kids into sports as soon as they can walk. <laughs> don't, why wait till they walk? I don't even know why you'd wait till they walk. So, yeah. So I wound up playing uh, three years of uh, junior varsity football at yeah. St. James Elementary School, which uh-huh. I know is a record because. <laughs> oh, wow. Because no one else has no ever one else snuck is in. Allowed. <laughs> yeah, nobody else is allowed. That's the Mark Stepnoski rule. That's uh, so uh, you love football right from the start. Is that uh, yeah. that was the thing? Yeah, yeah, it was. I used to watch it on TV when I was a kid. Um, you know, it was always on in the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, Erie's in Western Pennsylvania and football is very popular there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, always has been. So that was the team Steelers. Yeah, at the time they were a dynasty in the uh-huh. 70s. You know, people were freaking out about them. You know, they won four Super Bowls in six years during that time. Oh, and man. All, and that's your team, right? <laughs> you know, I didn't really have a favorite pro team yeah. um, because Erie is right in between Pittsburgh, Cleveland, mm-hmm. New York. Oh, uh, wow. Cleveland, Ohio, and Buffalo, New York. You picked the best team. That's what people do. Yeah. Like, who's ever winning the most, <laughs> yeah. that's who has the most of fans, that's right? Everybody nature. loves a winner. Yeah. Uh, what do they say? Everybody loves a winner, and uh, an orf- uh, loser is a, an orphan a thousand times over. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. That's is what it? they say, yeah. loser. A loser is an orphan, and a winner has a thousand fathers. Wow. But is, yeah, that, is, man, that a, is that a lyric, maybe? I don't know. No. I don't know. It, it should be. It should be, definitely, yeah. But yeah, people, so, you know, people like, they like the Bills and they like the Browns mm-hmm. and, and the Steelers, but you know, it's, there's a mixture there because they're really, every city is kind of the same distance away. Wow. So it's like football country, man. It's totally. Like, that's the yeah, place to you're, I mean, cause they're all on TV. All three of them are on TV yeah. all the time. And you know, people drive to games on buses, you know, and yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. thing. It's cultural. It totally. Absolutely. So, um. You know, I grew up watching all those teams on TV, all three of them regularly. Mm-hmm. And yeah, kind of people, yeah, like I said, whoever was winning had the most fans. And at that time, it was the Steelers. Although, you know, the Browns had good teams and so did the Bills at the time. Yeah. You know, they had good playoff teams. So, um, yeah, I'd watch them on TV. The other thing, uh, <clears throat> you know, my father watched, he liked football. He played football in high Happy. school. Yeah. And he went to high school with a guy named Fred Bolitnikoff, okay. who uh, went on to become a Hall of Fame wide receiver mm-hmm. for the Oakland Raiders. And so at that time, yeah. um, Fred Bolitnikoff, he, uh, he went to Florida State after he left Erie mm-hmm. um, and was a I wide receiver. I had no idea he was from Erie. That's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. He's the best football player to ever come out of Erie. Mm. He's in the Hall of Fame. Mm. And uh, he was Super Bowl MVP once. <laughs> wow. Um, the, the Raiders won the Super Bowl. From Erie. That's awesome. Yeah. It was about 1977. Mm-hmm. They, they won a Super Bowl. And he was the Super Bowl MVP. Wow. And like, we watched it on TV. You know? That's when you started playing football too, right? And it was a big deal. Yeah. You know, I mean, I liked football already. You know, I'd watch, I started watching it in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, it was always on, you know, on TV. But my father, you know, the Raiders were on TV all the time because they won every year yeah. back then. They were good every year. You know, John Madden was their coach. They went to the playoffs every year. Yeah. And so we were always watching, you know, the Raiders on TV and Fred Blitnikoff from Erie. That's my father awesome. played football with oh, in high man. school. And then the guy winds up being the MVP of the Super Bowl one year. Yeah. And I was about 10 at that time. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I just kept – that's the only thing I ever wanted to do in my life, ever. It's Let's the play only football. job I ever wanted. I, honestly, going back as far – as long as I can remember, you know, like people would ask you when you're a kid all yeah. the time, what yeah, do you yeah. want to do when you grow up? That was the only answer I ever had. See you later, Brandy. That's amazing. It was weird. That's... I just never had to think about, I just, you know, when I was about five or six years old, you know, yeah. like kindergarten, first grade. Yeah. And we just, I just remember starting to watch TV uh, at our house and watching football on TV yeah. and just thinking, you know, that looks like fun. That looks like a f- great way to make a living. You yeah, know, just, yeah. To make a living. You had that thought too. That you yeah. Could, oh, I just, wow. it was weird. It was just, you know, I just started thinking from a very young age, that's something I'd like to do when I grow up. Wow. 
You know? how, this is, well, this is what we talk about all, like all the time in this podcast. This is, seems like a pure example of from a young age deciding what it is that you want and not just play play football, but play football and make money doing that too, right? I feel sorry for people because, you know, you, when you're growing up and, and then even now, like you always come across young people who don't know what they want to do yeah. when they get older. You know, they Most don't know, people, right? A lot of people, yeah, they don't know what they want to major in yeah. in school, you mm -hmm. know, they don't, and then so many people wind up getting a job that's not involved with their major anyway, mm -hmm. you know, and so, uh, you know, I, I used to feel sorry for people like that. You know, I meet people along the way who just, you know, didn't know what they wanted to do when they grew I, I never had that problem. I mean, I just, for some reason, man, that seed got planted in my head early on, mm -hmm. and that's all I ever really wanted to do. So I just kind of set about doing it, you know, from a young age, even to the point where, you know, I had my father sneak me into football a year early. And that was because you, you wanted that. Yeah, I just wanted to start doing it, you know. That's unbelievable, man. And it's something interesting I thought of uh, that happened sort of in my life uh, when I started playing football. And I heard people talking about this. It was actually was Debbie, my wife, Debbie, as you know. And uh, she was saying that... Um, I'll just give you the pure example of it. If you have a backup plan, then you're less likely to do your, your the first thing you want to do because you have this other thing to, to fall back on. It's funny you say that because that's what every single person I think I ever talked to about it, that's, that's what they would say. Mm -hmm. Without question, you know, when you're a kid, mm -hmm. people ask you repeatedly, what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And like I said, the only answer I ever had mm -hmm. was, I'm going to play pro football. And I promise you, and this is no lie, at least 99.9% .9 of the people that asked me that question mm -hmm. after I gave them that answer would say to me, what are you going to do if you don't make it? <sighs> That's all anybody said. Yeah. I mean, I just, it got to the point where I'd wait to hear that. Yeah. And somebody would ask me, what are you going to do? I'm going to play football. I'd just wait because yeah. every single, there are two people I think in my life I remember who didn't say that. Yeah. Who? One guy was a teacher. And he just said, oh, that's great. That's good. You know, it's good to have a goal, yeah. you know, but I swear to God, it was like one in a million. Yeah. Everybody, the yeah. first thing they would always say mm -hmm. is, what are you going to do if you don't make it? Yeah. Because no one thinks you're going to make it. That's amazing. You know, hey, we had two things from that is one, we have to be careful what we say to kids, right? Yes. Like, honestly, like yes. our quick little whatever knee jerk reaction things might not be the right thing to say to them. That's Take right. Take a moment and like, you know, evaluate what you're going to say, and what effect it could have on uh, this person. But number two is there's also that thing about um, overcoming things. Yeah. Right. Like, so that might have been also a motivator for you to say, like, man, these guys got to shut up because I'm going to show them why. Yeah. I mean, you, you hear that over and over again mm -hmm. and then you start getting the impression that no one thinks I can make it. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone thinks you're going to fail. Yeah. And I get that. And then, yep. you know, you get older and you, you learn the statistics. Mm -hmm. I realize why people might think that way. Mm -hmm. And I considered it too, you know, when I was younger. But then obviously, you know, you turn the TV on, there's guys out there doing it. Somebody's making it. You Somebody's know what I mean? Somebody's got to do it, man. And that was a big thing about Fred Blitnikoff. Mm -hmm. You know, that brought it home for me. I, I could turn on the TV and go, okay, there's a guy from this city where mm -hmm. I'm from, okay, who, who played high school football with my father who's sitting right there. Wow. Who's out there doing it. So, yeah. you know, if he can do it, maybe I can do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, I'm going to be Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. But 15 years later to the day, you know, I was being introduced in the starting lineup for the Super Bowl. That's unbelievable. You know? That's so, hey, man, 15 years was all it took. 15 years yeah. is all it took to get from that Because I think kid. he won it in like 77, and then we went in the 1992 season. Wow. And beat the Bills. Yeah. Twice. So, yeah, I mean, but that was, you know... And the other thing that happened was um, one year in the summertime when I was about that age, mm -hmm. like 10 or 11, they had a football camp in Erie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had all the guys from Erie who were in the NFL come and do it at wow. once. And there were about four or five guys. Incredible. You know, and Erie is not a huge city. Mm -hmm. You know, it's decent size, but, you know, football is popular there. Mm -hmm. And so somehow they got all these guys from Erie who were in the league to come back and do this camp. Wow. And I went. Mm -hmm. and it was a great time. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. You know, and I think it was even free. Mm -hmm. And um, but it was, uh, you know, there was another guy who was a, a, a tight end for the Bengals. There was a guy who was a D lineman mm -hmm. for uh, the Packers. Another guy was a running back for the Falcons mm -hmm. and then Fred Blitnikoff. And I think that was about everybody. I think it's like four guys. Mm -hmm. there. That's, a, that's incredible. Right? Yeah. 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 Like, Pretty good. You know, yeah. all, all all current players. Mm -hmm. You know, it was uh, Jim Corbett was the tight end. Mike McCoy was the lineman. 
um, Woody Thompson was the running back, and they had all gone to different high schools. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then Fred Blitnikoff was a receiver. Yeah. But yeah, all those guys had gone to different high schools and uh, played different positions for different teams. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Something for everybody, man. That's, so that was, yeah. a lot, that was a lot of fun. You know, I went to that camp, and again, you know, I thought, okay, here's guys from this city, you mm -hmm. know, where I live, who grew up and, you know, did it. Mm -hmm. So this, this is proof that I could maybe do it too. Yeah. You know? That's and they awesome. were great guys too. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was a great thing. You know, I mean, you really, as a 10 year old or whatever, you know, you go from seeing the guy on TV, who's your idol doing what you dream about doing to just being a guy with you, being yeah. a normal guy and mm -hmm. interacting with you. Right. And, you know, who, and you know, who really just wants to be there and mm -hmm. who's there to help you and be as friendly. They were great guys. Yeah. You know, they're really nice, great guys. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, it was a great experience. So that was another thing that made me really kind of, you know, put the uh put it together you yeah. know put like the concept of the future with the present wow you know yeah and so i thought all right you know this is this is doable this is possible that's an amazing concept uh do you think you realized it at the time or are you, you realizing that you realized it looking back i think at the time i just it just it just made it more tangible yeah for me i can do you this know, it wasn't a bunch of superstars on tv doing this thing that mm -hmm. you know is so rare yeah it was just some guys from my hometown, yeah. you know, who grew up and went and played football for a living. That's amazing. And I thought it just kind of brought it all home, you know, yeah. and made it made it tangible. Mm -hmm. You know, made it more real. So that's interesting. I'll just I'll let you know my uh, like my comparison to that because I didn't grow up in a town where people had done that, right? So it was something that like people questioned nonstop. Yeah. And then it was only when I was uh, like in my last year playing football at Bishops where I had a picture of myself that somebody took. It was a really good picture. Had the big crowd shot in the background and every it was everything. And then this uh, Sports Illustrated came out with the left tackles edition. Do you remember that? And it was left tackle on the cover, and oh, there's yeah. all these pictures of uh, like Jim Lachey and stuff inside. Jimbo Covert. Uh, I have no idea who's that. He was a left tackle for the Chicago Bears. Okay, he's probably in there. First team all decade. Oh wow, it was Pro, for sure he was Pro in Bowl, there. <laughs> Pro Bowl left. He went to Pitt. Yeah, oh. so that's how I know who he is. We were not teammates at Pitt. He was yeah. older than me. Okay, but he was one of the guys that I watched on TV growing up, and I later on met him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he bought so he for in Walter that. Payton. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. And then probably Anthony Munoz. Anthony Munoz, for there. sure, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I, I remember looking at the picture of me and the picture of these guys and realizing, man, that's very similar, right? You know, that, so that's when, it, for me, it became tangible, something that I could do. Uh, when I was in high school, mm -hmm. I got recruited by Ohio State, mm -hmm. and they sent me a poster. And I put it up on the wall in my bedroom, and Jim Lachey was on the poster. Come on, that's awesome, yeah, man! Yeah. Wow, him and Kirk Loudermilk. That's amazing. They sent you an O line ball. picture too. I didn't even know it existed, right? Like yeah, a poster. Yeah, <laughs> so they were two really good players. You know, Ohio State's a football factory, yeah, even back yeah, then. Yeah. And so, but yeah, for some reason, they had pictures. Those two guys were there at the time. Okay. And they were obviously both really good because they both went on to have long pro careers. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean. But yeah, Jim Lachey, I. Uh, it's funny you mentioned Jim. Did, did you look up to him as a player when you were younger? I, yeah, for sure. I had, he was a great I player. I took that picture out and put it in my locker for the rest of the season. Yeah. I a few years, a few years back when Emmett Smith went into the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. uh, I went to uh, Ohio for the event. That's awesome. And afterwards, you know, every player has their own party. Mm -hmm. So I, I was at Emmett's party, but I left to go because that same year, Russ Grimm got inducted. Mm -hmm. Russ Grimm was the offensive guard for the Washington Redskins okay. who went to the University of Pittsburgh. Wow. And uh, we were not teammates. He was mm -hmm. older than me, but still I knew all about him. Yeah. And so I, I went, I crashed the party. No. I went down to that tent because nice. I knew there'd be a bunch of pit people yeah. there, you know, and I went to pit. And so I, I kind of talked my way in. That's me. And I went up just to see Russ Grimm, you know, yeah, but Jim yeah. Lachey was there. No way. And I met him and that's what I told him. I said, Ohio State's finest. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That that stuff means so much too, yeah. right? Former San Diego Charger. Yeah. Uh, who? Washington Redskin. Really? I had Jim no Lachey. idea. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I just remember him from his hog days. Right? Yeah. He also played for the Chargers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But that was funny. I actually saw him in there and yeah, I didn't get a chance to tell him about the poster. Emmett Smith mentioned you in his speech, didn't he? Yeah. He mentioned a lot of guys. He mentioned that's, a lot of linemen. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a great thing to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate uh, it. What is he the, the most always oh, most prolific running back of all time? I believe, right? The most yards still. Most yards, most carries, most touchdowns. <laughs> he's uh, Wayne Gretzky of uh, football. 
For you sure. should say that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I tell you what, the guy was a machine. What was uh, what was his like? What kind of running back was he? Like uh, <laughs> the best. Yeah, dude. So everything, the full package, right? Like without a doubt, unbelievable. He had eleven one thousand yard seasons in a row that's, in the NFL. That's uh, inconceivable. For Only sure. one that's, other person's ever done it. Uh, Eric Dickerson. Great guess, but no. Uh, um, Barry Sanders. Oh, Barry Sanders. One of your former teams. Yeah, well, my buddy. He uh, he called me the Canadian TKO because I was beating everybody up in practice. One of your former teammates. That's it. Yeah, yeah, he got. He had eleven. Him and Emmer are the only guys to ever do it. Wow. Eleven. He was so good too. One thousand yard seasons in a row. Oh man. Yeah. Barry Sanders and I came out the same year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nineteen eighty nine. We were in the draft. He was a third pick in the draft that year. Third pick, who was ahead yeah. of him? You remember? You probably remember the whole first round. Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman's number one? He was the first pick. Okay. Second pick, Hats. You you should know this. Daryl Johnson? No, uh, Second no round Mike pick. Irvin. No, he was the year before. Uh, he was the first round pick. Oh, There's cool. a Canadian connection, Hats. You should know this. I'm putting you on the spot. I know, I know, I know. I Second know, I know. pick. Second 1989, pick. 1989, Canadian connection. Oh. O lineman. I have no You want idea. some more hits? Oh, and, and Nate Newton? No, no, he was uh, older. I was older. Uh, not too. This guy, so. I'll give you another hint. Okay, this is killing me. My senior year, yeah. 1988. Yeah, uh, I was a finalist for the Outland Trophy. Moel Winibi. <laughs> I think he was later. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think sorry. he was a little younger than. Okay, me. okay, go on. You're a finalist, at Outland. Yeah, which is which an is award amazing, given to yeah. the best interior linemen yeah. in college football yeah in uh, the whole... offense or defense unbelievable and so they they have three finalists okay and i didn't win the award okay, okay but i was one of three finalists yeah, 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 yeah. but this guy that i'm talking about he was also a finalist he didn't win he didn't tracy win. rocker won that okay. year a okay. defensive lineman for yeah. auburn yeah, yeah but this guy was an offensive lineman like myself yes and, and he was a finalist for the outland yeah. trophy and okay. he was the second pick in the draft okay oh oh, oh yes of course i know this it's uh um uh mike chad no. Uh, Tony Mandrich. Yes. Oh. I knew you'd get Thank it. Thank you. Tony, Tony Mandrich. Mandrich. I met Tony Mandrich. Very nice guy. Yeah, yeah. I met him too. He yeah. was a nice guy. Yeah, I met yeah. him that year. He was a nice guy. Yeah. His brother John Mandrich played in the CFL quite a bit. Correct. Yeah. He yeah. Was a big guy. So Tony Mandrich. That's amazing though. I remember the excitement in Canada when that was going on. That was yeah. your draft. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was the second pick yeah. uh, to yeah. the Packers. Awesome. He was from Oak Oakland, Oakville, Oakville, Ontario, I believe. Yeah, that sounds about yeah, right. Yeah, went to Michigan State. Is that yes. right? Yes, yeah, he did. yeah, yeah. And he was making some noise there as a as an offensive lineman. That was great. Yeah, and then he uh you're right. He made a lot of noise, and then unfortunately, fairly quickly faded into obscurity. Yeah, I think he played a lot, like twelve years though. In the end, he went to the Colts or something. He played Does about, I think, three or four years. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. But you're I right. He, he 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 was with the Patri uh, Packers for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then he went to the Colts for a couple of years. Yes. And then he was done. Yeah. So I think he played like four years roughly, yeah. which is about an average NFL career. Yeah. So I uh, yeah. in the preseason, the Colts were in uh, Detroit when I was there. And so he was, it was amazing. Was he still on the team? Yeah, he was on the team. I went, that's when I met him the first time. So that was 95? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. then he played at least six years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was amazing. I saw him. I couldn't believe it, uh, and I ran. You know, I, I'm sure he doesn't remember it all because you know, for me, it was a huge moment for him. It was hey, whatever, you know. Because I remember he wanted to play in guard. Yes, uh, that's he, right. He was a tackle in college. Yeah, yeah. And then um, you know he played the, the, when he was started out with the Packers. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a tackle, and then they let him go. And then he, when he went to the Indianapolis, they put him at guard. Yeah, yeah. He actually played a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember that. So, yeah, yeah well, if it was, that was 95, then yeah. he played at least six years. Yeah, oh, so that's he played good. longer than I thought. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I've also met him uh, doing off the record, too, which uh, he was on the show with me one time. You know, it's funny because after I moved here, I moved to Vancouver in 2003, mm -hmm. and um, I used to go to the gym and I used to see him on TV all the time. Uh, what was he doing on TV? He was a. Uh, like an anchor person for a sports highlight show. Really? Yeah. I've never seen that. Yeah, I used to go into the gym every morning and they would have this show on oh, that's every cool. day that would be showing sports highlights from the day before football, yeah. like a half hour show. Yeah. And I forget who his co-host was, huh. but they would just kind of, you know, he was just a guy, you know, 
behind the counter okay. talking about yeah. commentary for like a half an hour and they yeah. would show highlights and stuff. Oh, that's cool. And I, I didn't know that, right? And mm-hmm. I just, after I moved here in 03, a couple of years after I retired, I was like, yeah, hey, there's Tony Mandrich in the media. <laughs> yeah, who was in your draft uh, year. So he found his niche. Yeah, he found his spot. I think, I don't think he does that anymore. And yeah, I haven't seen him. Yeah, I think uh, he's a photographer, like a pretty high end, like, no uh, kidding. yeah, like he takes awesome pictures. You can follow oh, him on social media. Yeah. Good for him. I think he lives in like the States somewhere, maybe Texas, yeah. I'm thinking, somewhere in Texas. So I, mean, I know I can't, I wanted to get him on my podcast and because uh, I thought he was in Toronto and I was going to Toronto for a day and uh, yeah, it turns out he's far away, not in Toronto. So you go to high school and uh, when, once you get, it, what's bigger there? Is it high school football or is it uh, like the community, what you call the JV? Is JV, JV, because uh, in Canada, for me, there's just uh, high school football. JV just football. means junior varsity. Oh, so that is part of the school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, when, but when you're nine, are you playing on, you're not playing on a school team, right? I was. Oh, that's what, oh, it was part of the school. I had no yeah. idea. Like, you know, in Canada, there's no way that they have little kids uh, school football, right? That's, right. That's, yeah, that's. Uh, and not every school in the U.S. has it either. Oh, okay. You know, it's, it just depends on the school. Yeah. Um, this, this Catholic school that I went to, they had a football team. Okay. And a lot of the other Catholic, there's a lot of Catholic people in Erie. Mm-hmm. And so pretty much every parish has a school. Yeah. And a lot of them had football, mm-hmm. so they'd play each other. They had their own league, mm-hmm. and they just play each other. Okay, you know? I get it. Yeah. And so you had the fifth and the sixth graders, and then you'd have the seventh and the eighth graders. Mm-hmm. You know, the elementary school there goes to eighth grade, and so you know once JV is just junior varsity, that's fifth and sixth grade. Okay, and then uh, seventh and eighth grade is varsity. Mm-hmm. And but by that time, um, my school dropped football. Okay. So I went and played in this city league. In oh, addition okay. to having schools that had teams in their own league, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was an actual city league for just kids. Yeah, yeah, but that's was, the same. We have that yet. Too. Yeah, yeah. it was called Bay City Football League. Okay. Because Erie, it's on the lake. Yeah, yeah. That's like the nickname, Bay City. Mm-hmm. And so that I, I played in that league uh, in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, in seventh grade, my family moved to Oklahoma for a year. Huh. Uh, so my father got transferred out of his job. Yeah. What did he do? Uh, at the time, he worked for a company that made meters and pumps for oil. Mm-hmm. So uh, we went down and lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma for nine months. Oh, wow. So in seventh grade, I went down there and went to a public school, mm-hmm. uh, public junior high, and played football yeah. in seventh grade there. Were you playing offensive line from the start? Uh, mostly. Yeah. Because I was a big kid yeah. for my age. Right. Um, in eighth grade, I played running back, ah. which was different. Was, was that when you went to Oklahoma? Is that that year? Uh, we came back okay. to Erie. Yeah. So in eighth grade, I was back in Erie. Um, I'm sorry. I played I played running back in sixth grade mm-hmm. uh, at my school. Okay. Sixth grade, I played running back. And then uh, in seventh grade, was in Tulsa, mm-hmm. Oklahoma. And then we moved back to Erie. Mm-hmm. And so I went back to my old school again. But they had dropped football. Mm-hmm. So I played one year in eighth grade in this other league, Bay City Football League. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, then the following year, went to high school and started playing um, high school football. And uh, that's when things kind of got serious. You know, that's when I started to tell myself, all right, you know, I want to go to play college football. Mm -hmm. I want to get a scholarship. So I got to really start concentrating on this. This is like grade nine. These are your thoughts. Wow. And so I actually made the varsity in ninth grade, Mm -hmm. which was rare. I was really thrilled about that. Mm-hmm. Cause Offensive just, line? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, primarily. Okay. Um, and that was exciting because, mm-hmm. you know, they had a freshman team and then they had a JV team, mm-hmm. which was mostly sophomores. And then they had the varsity, which is mostly juniors and seniors. Mm-hmm. So most freshmen play on the freshman team. Some okay. freshmen played on the JV team. Yeah. And I got to play on the varsity as a freshman. Wow. So that was exciting. You know, I was in there with guys that's, three years older that's than me. Too st- that's all that's way up the ladder right okay i got you like yeah so that's rare nobody does that that was exciting yeah so that's when i kind of realized you know uh maybe you know i i am talented if i can play with against these guys two three years older than me now you know maybe i have a chance maybe Mm -hmm. i could be talented enough to go to college on a scholarship okay so i got a question for that uh, right now about this because uh 
uh, as an NFL offensive lineman, you're like really small, right? Like, yeah, uh, they, especially like, by the time I retired. So what happens is like people uh, like when they're young and they get big, like I'm sure you were big then, right? For people your age. Yeah. And then you just don't keep getting like equivalently bigger yeah. and bigger, right? Till you know, an NFL size. So there's probably others who are like that. And you, I can think of people who are the big kids fast or whatever, and they were really good. But then they're, you know, selling tacos as adults, you know, you know what I mean? They just yeah. stop. They just stopped playing. So that happened. Some guys are in the NFL are selling tacos now. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I, <laughs> I'd love a taco right now. You know what I mean? But So all those guys, they don't continue. But you continued uh, to play the super highest level, and, but didn't get that extra three or four inches that, you know what I mean? Like 6'2", six, six is that what? Yeah. That's uh, incredible, right? How I just do we... kept moving down the line. Okay. Oh, so you started to tackle. Yeah, because okay, I, I was yeah. big for high school. Yeah. Then I got to college, and I wasn't as big, so I played guard. Yeah. Then I got to the pros, and I wasn't as big, so I played center. Yeah. That's kind of how it works. Okay. You know, if yeah. size-wise, you know, usually the biggest guys are tackles right, guards, right. and yeah, centers yeah. maybe a little bit smaller. Mm. <clears throat> but I was really excited to go to Pitt because, mm. um, you know, I played one year in high school, I played tight end. Okay. Uh, and one year I, I played a uh, linebacker for a few years, mm -hmm. but by the time I got older, I was playing offensive line okay. and I kind of figured that's and defensive line. Mm -hmm. I played both. We didn't have, you know, we had a good team, but we didn't have a ton of kids. So some guys played both ways mm -hmm. in high school. Um, uh, but then I, it kind of became apparent that, look, if I'm going to make this, it's going to be as an offensive lineman, okay. you know, yeah. um, just cause of my size. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was lucky because I have an older brother, as we mentioned yeah, earlier. Yeah, who's very big, right? Yeah, like, and he, he played college football. He's three and a half years older than me. Mm -hmm. So he was playing college football while I was playing high school football. Mm -hmm. So we used to work out together all oh, the time. Oh, that's, that's a great to have, for he, sure. My brother was a great role model, man. Yeah. Awesome older brother. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he even we even played the same position for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a right offensive tackle. That's awesome. And so was I yeah. for a couple of years. And he was good. He was a four-year starter at this college in Erie, Mercyhurst yeah. College at the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, you know, my brother and I, we used to train together. We used to lift weights together, yeah. run together, yeah. play the same position for a while. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time as a young guy preparing, and my brother was with me. That's as, amazing, you know, man. Anybody who knows, yeah. right, anybody who's ever been to a gym yeah. or, or been a runner, knows that it's better if you got a partner yeah you got you a know? big brother with you for sure yeah it's just wow. it's just more fun and yeah. you know gives you somebody to talk to during the downtime you know yeah. when you're not lifting or running and just mm. you know gives somebody to push you and it's just way better that way mick so yeah, yeah mick mick and i you know we worked out a lot in high school and ran together and you know we go uh play basketball and hang out and mm -hmm. yeah man just have a good time and uh i used to hang out with him and his college buddies yeah you know and so that was kind of a preview of coming attractions nice you know i'd go with him to his college in erie and yeah. lift weights with those guys oh, no way or you know i'd watch him practice yeah uh and it kind of gave me a little bit of a an idea of what it was like to be in college and play football yeah, yeah. you know and i see these guys you know working out and going to class yeah. and budgeting their time mm -hmm. and this little preview of coming attractions. You That's know, it, was, it was a great thing as a young guy to mm -hmm. get a look at these guys doing something that you were hoping to do in the near future. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of yeah, get yeah. a glimpse of the future. Yeah. You know, and That's I could talk to my brother about it. I used to go watch my brother play games, and then I'd go play it later that night. That's amazing. You know, which yeah. put me in a great and frame of mind. He'd come watch probably, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's just the kind of thing you know, puts you in a great frame of mind. Yeah. You, know, you go watch, I go watch my brother play, you know, and then I go play later that night. It just kind of get me in the right frame of yeah. mind to play a game. That's you know? awesome. Especially since he's playing the same position. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, I had a great time hanging out with my brother and his teammates back then. It's important. It's and fun. so, uh, but, you know, wound up, uh, I just kept training and kept playing, you know, and, um, we had a pretty decent program one year, uh, my sophomore year, we actually went undefeated wow. and, uh, finished ranked third in the state of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. which was a good accomplishment. That feels good. That was before they had state playoffs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we didn't, we didn't go any further okay. back then. You just had your, re in, in Erie, you just had your regular season and yeah. then that was it. Nice you know, end now they, it's different. Now you actually have playoffs and you can go, you know, state play champ. other teams in the state. Oh yeah. So, but we didn't get to do that then. So, but anyway, we just, we, finished third in the state, mm -hmm. which was, you know, a nice accomplishment yeah. and kind of, you know, gave me a taste of winning and what it was like mm -hmm. and how much fun it was. 
And uh, we had some other guys in my school who were older than me go to uh, colleges on scholarships, you know. Yeah. So it started, I just kept, you know, pursuing it, you know. And then, um, you know, kept working out and just, you know, getting bigger and, you know, my senior year uh, wound up making a couple All-American teams. Oh, nice. And so started to get recruited mm -hmm. a lot, you know, um, and uh, wound up, you know, I, I was set on going to Pitt. Mm -hmm. I, I never really wanted to go to any other school because at that time, Pitt was a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole time I was in junior high and in high school growing up, they were winning, mm -hmm. going to a bowl game every year. And Dan Marino? Phenomenal, yeah, Western PA guy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yep, former teammate. Yeah. yeah. Awesome guy. Dan Marino. Love Dan Marino. Awesome guy yep. for sure. And uh, I remember one day when I was at Pitt going out on the field and meeting Dan Marino and yeah. playing catch with the guy That's and was just blown away. Unbelievable. He was standing about 30 yards away and he was throwing this ball to me yeah. and it didn't even look like he was trying hard. And this ball was coming in so hard it was yeah. making my hands hurt. Um, I, I played catch with Dan Marino too. I, uh, and I did it just so I could say I like did for the experience. It didn't last long. You said like the balls were really hard to catch for me. I, I, <laughs> I used to think, you know, how does this guy's receivers, how do they not? You have to wear gloves. You have to. If you were going to catch passes, yeah. you have to wear gloves. Yeah. You have broken fingers. I, yeah. I, it made me wonder, like, how did those guys not have broken fingers? The, uh, conditioning, uh, I mean, I guess. He, he, looked like, he, he looked like he was just dropping a tissue. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, and he was winging this ball 30 <laughs> yards. He was barely even flicking his wrist. And yeah. the thing was coming in in a straight line so hard it was making my hands hurt yes i said well i guess that's you know how you you know become a hall of fame quarterback yeah. right touched by the hand of god I, I can't figure it that's one thing in sports someone's arm strength is yeah. how do you figure that out and you can't tell body type anything no, man it's just a god-given gift yeah right? so here's a true story pete morris who's a friend of ours his brother dave go redskins yeah go redskins yeah his brother dave could throw a, a, like a tennis ball for his dog so far and he didn't even know until he was in his 20s i was at the dog park behind my house downtown on metcalf street you you, you were probably even there one time right yeah and uh, he'd be at the other side like a schoolyard and he would throw it over the schoolyard over the dog park and i would stand there and go how how long have you known you could do this? Like that's you should be playing baseball. This is he had no idea it was a crazy. Should be gift. a right fielder. He could throw this ball so far, but that's, like uh, Dwight Evans, yes, or Dave Parker. <laughs> I just had dinner with Dave Morris about two months ago. Well, there you go. No, he, he was in town visiting. Yeah, we went and had dinner with oh, him. Oh no way! There yeah. you go. Great next, guy. Next time he's here, to get him to throw a tennis ball <laughs> in the house or something, <laughs> throw it to the beach from here. <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. So okay, so we're back at Pitt. We're going to Pitt. That's great. You you want to? It was it uh, like right away? Was it? Are you had to do something special? Work super hard? They, they were a football factory, yeah. like I said, and they particularly for offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. They had a guy there at the time named Joe Moore, okay. who was a, one of the best offensive line coaches in America. I saw his coat this morning. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They've actually now named a, a, an award after him. Yeah. Uh, they started doing it a couple of years ago in college football. Yeah. The NCAA, they, they give out the Joe Moore Award now to the best offensive line in college football. Wow. Just like... The, the top wide receiver in college football gets mm -hmm. the Fred Blitnikoff Unbelievable. Award. Unbelievable. What? Is that pro football? Is that what you just said? Uh, college football. Oh, college football. That's amazing. So that's my connections, right? Yeah, like yeah, Fred yeah. Blitnikoff from Erie, the best wide receiver in college football, gets a Fred Blitnikoff Award. And the guy that recruited me yeah. to go to Pitt and was my coach my freshman year, the best offensive line in college <laughs> wow. football, gets the Joe Moore Award. Hey, man, so you... I was with greatness. I was around greatness, right? Yeah. That's the thing. When you're a kid like that, man, you see that stuff. Yeah. It just, it makes it tangible. Yeah. You know, you see what's possible. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I, like I said, I knew at that point that I was going to be an offensive lineman and that was kind of my goal. And, um, one of my, my offensive line coach in, in uh, high school yeah. and my head coach in high school knew Joe Moore. Okay. So uh, there was a connection there. Mm -hmm. Um, my line coach in high school had coached with Joe Moore years before that okay. at high school in Erie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these guys, I mean, they, they knew that I wanted to go to college on a scholarship. They knew I wanted to play offensive line. And so, you know, my offensive line coach in high school is buddies with the, one of the best line coaches in America. Wow. You know, at one yeah. of the best programs in America. Yeah. And I wanted to play pro ball. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. I, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Pitt. Cause and, were, and you're telling people about it, right? Yeah. Like, cause I often talk to schools and the kids are apprehensive to talk, to tell people what they want to do. Right. And I always say, man, if you tell people what you want to do, everyone's going to start helping you. Right. True enough. <laughs> right. Like it's going to go know. way better, man. Yeah. Cause no one makes it on their own. That's right. You know, we all need could use a little help. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Pitt, I mean, they were a football factory. They were putting guys in the pros mm -hmm. as much as any program in the nation at that time. Yeah. You know, um, wow. check this out, Hats. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite football stats, really, of yeah. all time. Okay. There was a span uh, in the late 70s and early 80s where Pitt, they went 11 and 1 three years in a row. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is when I was, you know, like a teenager and I used to watch them on TV. Yeah. They went to a major bowl game every year, you know, and I was really becoming a big Pitt fan at that time. I'm mm -hmm. like 12, 13, 14, yeah. around 79, 80, 81 when okay. they had this run. Yeah. And one of those teams, I don't remember what year it was, mm -hmm. okay, but one of those teams at Pitt, okay, mm -hmm. from their starting offense and their starting defense, yeah. okay, out of those 22 guys, okay. all right, 17 <laughs> went to the NFL. That's unbelievable. Have you ever heard anything like no, that before? No, I don't think that exists anywhere else. No, I don't, I, that's probably Not never even close. happened. That's, Not even close. No. If you think about it, if you went to a college team and half of them went pro, yeah. that'd blow your mind. That's unbelievable. They had 17 guys out of 22. Yeah. They're starting so, what, what, lineups. Yeah, imagine how bad those five people feel. <laughs> They went to the NFL. Yeah. And I don't mean they just went to the NFL for a cup of coffee. Yeah. These are guys who went to the NFL. That's and crazy. Kicked ass. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you're talking like every D lineman they had yeah. went to the pros. That's all amazing. five. Every offensive lineman they had, yeah. all five went to the NFL. Yeah. I mean, it was unheard of. Oh, okay. So when you see that as a kid, do you think, wow, that's going to turn me into an, a professional football player? Or, Hopefully. man, that's going to be hard to, uh, to... No, that was totally the thing. Yeah. I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm from Western Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. school's in my backyard. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, And if you want to be a pro football player, that's the place to go. Yeah. Because they yeah. got the best coach, and they're cranking out pros like crazy. Yeah. You know? I mean, they're going 11-1 three years in a row. Yeah. And, like, every guy's going pro. Yeah, I mean, they the had... It, you know, there were Hall of Famers on those teams, wow. more than one. You know, it was un, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, right after that, this was a period not long after they had won a national championship. Mm -hmm. Just prior to that, 1976, they won a national championship. Okay, they went undefeated yeah. and uh, won the national championship. That's when Tony Dorsett was there, nice. the great Hall of Fame running back who went on to play for the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. um, who was at the time. Uh, a Heisman Trophy winner yeah. and the all-time leading rusher in college football history. Wow. Tony Dorsett, he had over 6,000 yards rushing in college in four years. That's unbelievable. Wow. Here's another one of my favorite stats, by the way, of all time. Yeah. Okay. Tony Dorsett, in his career at Pitt, mm -hmm. okay, he played four years. Okay. He was a four-year starter. This is before people were allowed to come out early. Okay. You know, you had to yeah, stay had to do your until time. senior. Yeah. Tony Dorsett, in his Pitt career, had over 1,000 yards rushing against Notre Dame. Is that, what, the eight games, maybe? Four. Four games? Yeah. How many yards? 1,000. Oh, my gosh. Wow. They played Notre Dame every year yeah. when he was at Pitt. Yeah, and he got 250 yards he at least. He averaged 250 <laughs> a game. Against Notre Dame. And, you know, that's, that's not hilarious. like, that's Notre Dame. Yeah. I mean, they were good. <laughs> yeah. You know, they had a good team yeah uh, i think one of those years they may have even won a national championship that's amazing you know so you're playing yeah, yeah. against a major college football team yeah. okay that's going to big bowl games every year notre yeah. dame yeah, yeah you know yeah, what i mean that's amazing guy averaged over 250 a game yeah again he had over a thousand yards rushing against notre dame that's probably a unique class of its own right there. Uh, yeah. Right? How else could you do that now? Right? I don't think anyone's ever done that before. Yeah, it would be pretty I hard. Think, I think his worst game against Notre Dame was like 170 yards wow. rushing. So he had one that was And like his best three was like 313. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He actually had over 300 yards rushing. Against, was, yeah. I, I mean, phenomenal. Yeah. Just otherworldly statistics. Yeah. Tony Dorsett, you know. Yeah. A bad night was 100 and something yards for him, right? That's, that's your worst game yeah. against Notre Dame, right? <laughs> So wow. yeah, that's the kind of football they had going on at Pitt. Yeah. You know what I mean? They had stuff like that going on. Yeah. Unheard of stuff. You yeah. know, I mean a guy with the most yards rushing ever, 
national championship. Yeah. And, you know, three years in a row, 11 and one. They actually won a national championship one of those years. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the New York Times had their own national championship. Everybody, the main ones are UPI and AP. Okay. Associated Press yep. and United Press International. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones everybody really pays attention to. But they also had a New York Times poll. Mm -hmm. They had their own top 20. And they used to take other things into account, like strength of schedule mm -hmm. and things like that, yeah. points for and against. Okay. Like the other ones were just pretty much the record. Yeah. You know, whoever was undefeated is going to win it, yeah. right? Yeah. But this other, this New York Times, their poll was more scientific. Okay. And actually, one year they picked Pitt national champions, nice. even though they had one loss yeah. because of their difficulty of schedule yeah. and the points for points against all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They actually named them national champions one year mm -hmm. in that span, that even though awesome. they had one loss. Mm -hmm. But they were incredibly talented, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had, like I said, almost the whole team was going pro. That's it's crazy. never unheard of, you yeah, know. Unheard of. So I'm, I'm thinking, all right, that's where I want to go to school. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to be an alignment. I'm going to go down there and play for Joe Moore. You know, he's buddies with my low line coach in high school. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing had a very nice symmetry to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. like meant to be, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Everything was just falling into place as far as what I wanted to do and who knew who mm -hmm. and everything, you know? So, yeah, I went down to Pitt. And, um, you know, was lucky that I didn't have to redshirt, you know, most in, in the United States, uh, in the NCAA, um, most freshmen redshirt. Yes. Because uh, you have an extra year. And it's supposed to be for if you get hurt. Mm -hmm. But no one uses it for that. Okay. You know, they just use it for freshmen who aren't ready to play. Mm -hmm. So almost everybody winds up going to school for five years. Okay. Like me. But your freshman year, you don't even suit up. Yeah. You know, if you're red shirt, you practice, but you don't suit up. You don't right. play. You know, you don't really. That's you don't, what I did because you're not eligible. Mm -hmm. You know, but I was lucky. I was good enough to play, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to red shirt. Which, in retrospect, I'm extremely happy about. Mm -hmm. You know, because I just wanted to go to the pros. I didn't want to be in college an extra That's year. That's amazing thought, you know? man. Yeah. So I got to start like half the games my freshman year at your as a guard. Guard, okay. Yeah, as an offensive. So now guard. you're starting to move in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. After being a tackle uh, in high school, um, I became a guard in college. So that year I played left guard, mm -hmm. and then my sophomore, junior, and senior year I played right guard. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like I said, my senior year, uh, you know, made uh, a couple All American teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the finalist for the Atlin Trophy. So I got drafted in the third round by mm -hmm. the Cowboys. Okay. Um, that year, 1989, was uh, the, the first year that Jerry Jones owned the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. um, right before that draft in April of 89 is when uh, Jerry Jones bought the team mm -hmm. and he fired Tom Landry, who had been their only coach forever, yes. you know, Hall of Fame one of the greatest coaches of all time, mm -hmm. Tom Landry. They, they fired him and then, uh, you know, came in with the new staff and everything. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, Troy Aikman was the first pick in the draft that year. Mm -hmm. And the Cowboys drafted him because the year before, they had the worst record in the league. Okay. So I got drafted by the worst team in the league. Yeah. They were 3-13 yeah. in 1988. Yeah. And that was the year they drafted Mike Urban. You mentioned Mike Irvin yeah. earlier. Oh, he was the year before you. Yeah, guys. he was their first round draft pick in 1988. Okay, which was Tom Landry's last year. Okay, so that was like a great gift that Tom that Landry gift, man. gave yeah. us, Mike Irvin. Wow, you know, thank God he was on the team. Yeah, but you know that was what was kind of misleading. There was a lot of talent on that team, man. You know, yeah. people think that we were just awful because they had the worst record. Yeah, not the case. Yeah, you know what I mean. Every NFL team has talent, man. Yeah, 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 you know what for I mean. Sure. A whole lot of guys that were there when the team was three and thirteen in eighty eight and mm -hmm. one and fifteen in eighty nine my rookie year, a whole lot of those guys wound up playing for the Super Bowl. Amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah, two years later, right? So we just yeah. needed, you know, to add some talent and, you know, change some coaching. Yeah. But believe me, man, the cupboard was not bare. Yeah. You know, that's right. oh, it couldn't have been. You can't no. get that many uh, players in two years, right? Exactly. Like, that's a, exactly. That's a lot. And not just playing the Super Bowl, you won the Super Bowl, right? Like that's we won it after the 92 season. So that was... That was a big turn, right? In 89, we went 1-15. in 15. Yeah, 1-15. in 15. Wow. And then... Uh, Is that the worst uh, record ever in the NFL? Like, no. Someone's... There's actually been a winless season. Wow. There's been a couple. Okay. Uh, yeah. The Lions did it not too long ago. Yeah. They do it. One of your old teams. Yeah, that's... I'm sure. Probably the year that they decided to put me on. They had... The team or... That's what they get for letting you go. That's what I mean. They didn't win You're again. exactly right. Yeah, yeah the they curse, went 0-16. The the uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's a... Uh... Yeah, they had an 0-16 year 
<laughs> within the last decade, I think. Yeah. So okay. So yeah. that's crazy in a situation to go into. It's not like a high. I mean, NFL's high pressure no matter what. But yeah. like you know, you're on a team that's uh, hasn't won. Oh, it was two awful. games. Yeah. I mean, no. Yeah. I mean, I don't think many people thought we were going to do worse. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. You can, uh, but yeah, to go from three and thirteen to one and fifteen, that was awful. Yeah. But I'm, I tell you, man, that one and fifteen team. Mm -hmm. All right. Mike Irvin was on that team. Yeah. Troy Aikman was on that team. Oh, I thought Troy Aikman was your year, draft year. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the team that was three and fifteen or three and nineteen eighty nine team. Yeah. It was one and fifteen. And you were on that team. That was my first year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Eighty nine was my rookie year. Okay, I get it. Yeah. yeah. And so. Yeah, and that's the same year Troy Aikman got drafted. Okay, yeah, right. He was the first pick of the draft. Yeah, right after first right before Tony Mandarich. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, uh, and Barry Sanders. Yeah, wow. And then um, Daryl Johnson got picked in the second round. Okay, and then I got picked in the third round. Yeah, and then actually in the fourth round they picked Tony Tolbert. Okay, and that was a great draft. <laughs> that was their first draft. Yeah, that's four Pro Bowl players in one draft is that's pretty unique in the world i would imagine right that was a great i mean they you know not to brag yeah. but man they came out of the gate strong yeah the, the new people the, at the, the cowboys new, yeah they've been paying attention you know, for they, sure. they took Troy Aikman. that's a first ballot hall of famer yeah they took daryl johnston a pro bowl fullback who yeah. played 11 years amazing then they took me yeah. you know a center who made the all decade team amazing and then they took tony tolbert who started nine years wow at defensive end for the yeah. cowboys and yeah. made a pro bowl one year yeah so that's four there's somebody out there who takes credit for that who is that oh there's a few guys that could yeah bob ackles is one of bob them Bob ackles canadian from vancouver absolutely really canadian connection wow. again bob ackles was our player personnel director at that time and he doesn't get nearly enough credit yeah you know he was our player personnel director at wow. that time I got and shivers up my spine. Man. He was, you know, that's what they do. Yeah. You know, they run the draft. They're yeah. responsible. They're like your, your GM, your player personnel guy. That's who goes out and finds talent. And this is before free agency. Yeah. You know, in 89, there was no free agency at the NFL. Okay. So it was all draft and trades. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you got players, uh -huh. you know? That's, yeah. So Bob Ackles played a very pivotal role wow. in getting talent to that team early on. Right. But he was part of that draft, man. You know, that's incredible. Yeah. And then he then he left a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. he, he was there for my first couple of years. Great mm -hmm. guy, by the way. I yeah. really like Bob a lot. Man. Awesome. You know, and uh, he uh, when I signed my first contract in the NFL, it was with Bob Ackles. Oh, no way. I showed up at training camp and it had been negotiated. And yeah. I went into his office and signed it and then went out and started practicing. Oh, that's amazing. Man. But he was a great guy. Yeah. And yeah, he came up here afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, he, after he left, he came back to Canada. And yeah. yeah, when I moved here in 2003, he was still involved with uh, the uh, the Lions. Yeah, I, I could be wrong, but I believe he was like a, a water boy for the team when he was a little kid. Yeah, he started from the ground up. Yeah, yeah, he it's incredible for decades. Yeah, it was a shame when he passed away. I remember when he died a few years ago. Man, mm -hmm. that was a shame. But he yeah. was great. He people forget, you know. But anybody who likes Canadian football and Bob Ackles should realize that he played an integral role wow. with that team in Dallas getting turned around and going Quickly. from the worst team to the best team. Incredible. Because you know, that was a great draft, man, to mm. come out with a draft like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's you know, that's a lot of talent in one draft. You know, yeah. like a I, Hall of Famer, four Pro Bowlers, <laughs> you know, an all-decade. I mean, that's yeah. you know, they hit the jackpot. That is amazing. That and here's the funny thing about that, too. Is you know, Tony Tolbert was an outside linebacker mm -hmm. in college, and they switched him to DN, and he was great. I was a guard yeah. in college. Wow. I've never played center. They switched me to center and I wound up, you know, going to five Pro Bowls. Yeah. So they were, you know, they even had, they even took guys and switched positions. That's amazing. You know, they did it with Darren Woodson a year or two later. Darren Woodson was an outside linebacker in yeah. college and we drafted him and he became a strong safety and mm -hmm. he became the all-time leading tackler in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. That's incredible. Had 12 years. That's incredible. So, I mean, they, they find, that's one of the things I'm most proud of with my career mm -hmm. Is, is going into the NFL and, and excelling at something I'd never done before. Wow. You know, I never played a down a center until I got to the NFL. And it's a completely different position, right? I mean, there's so much more involved. There, yeah, it's not the same. It's, it's all O-line, but, you know, even guard and tackle aren't the same thing. Yeah. And, and center and guard, center and tackle are not the same thing. Right. You know, that's why if you see a guy that can play more than one, mm -hmm. Like, you know, Larry Allen or Bruce Matthews, yeah. it's unbelievable. Bruce Matthews is Because that yeah, takes huge talent yeah. to play more than one position, mm -hmm. even on O-line. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, um, 
when I first got there, I, I was playing guard, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, <laughs> the guy, the starting guard was holding out. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't have a contract yeah. and he was holding out. That gives you reps, right? So, I, yeah, I'm in there. I'm playing guard, mm -hmm. right? But then uh, over the course of the season, gradually I got switched to center. Mm -hmm. And then they eventually left me there full time. And so I got to, uh, they let me start the last four games of the year. Okay. Because, you know, we were like one and 12 at the time. The whole mm -hmm. year was a wash, yeah. you know. They were letting every be on the team, you know. <laughs> finally, they got around to me, yeah, because I actually, you know, had a month to play center, yeah, you know, in practice, yeah, yeah. And so they, so then it was my turn, mm -hmm. you know. So they, I remember my coach came up to me and he said, "Okay, you know, we're going to have you start at center this week, yeah. And if you do well, you know, we're just going to leave you in there the rest of the year." Nice. So that's what happened. Yeah, I went in there, had a good game, mm -hmm. and so I got to play the last uh, four games, start the last, which is the only thing that pulled me through that god awful <laughs> miserable season. Yeah, you know they say your first season's the longest anyway because okay. it's like twice as long as a college season. Yeah, you know you have four preseason games, four or five yeah. preseason games, and then sixteen regular season games. It's like two college seasons. Yeah, it's a long know? way to go. And you know. And, <laughs> In college, training camp's like, you know, two weeks long. Mm -hmm. You know, in the pros at that time, it was five. Yeah. And so it was just a marathon. You were in training camp for more than a year of your life. Isn't that crazy? Oh, thought? yeah. It's, it's yeah. crazy. I tried thought. to miss as much as I could. Yeah, that's but. wise. Yeah, you become a veteran, right? <laughs> but, yeah, so, you know, the, the, it was the longest season in history. You know, you yeah. won one game. But that was the only thing that pulled me through is I got to start the last four games, mm -hmm. which was really exciting. And you won two of them. Uh, didn't win any. Oh, I thought you finished three in 15 in the second season. No. Uh, oh, this is your first season. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, why do I keep 89. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My second season, uh, we actually we got better. We went seven and nine that year. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Our offense got worse. Hmm. In 89, yeah. when we won one game, uh, we finished 27th in total offense, which was second to last because wow. there was only 28 teams then mm -hmm. yeah. in 1989. Mm -hmm. So our offense was horrible. That's a big reason why we only won one game. Mm -hmm. So we come back in 1990, okay? We drafted Emmett Smith. Oh. First pick in the 1990 draft. Wow. So that's their three drafts in a row, Hats. Mm -hmm. Three first rounders. Mike Irvin in 88, Troy Aikman in 89, Emmett Smith in 90. That is right? unbelievable. Three Hall of Famers. Wow. Okay, so they had a run. In addition to a lot of other great players drafted as well. Yeah. You know, but yes. that was like the core of our offense. Yeah. You know, and, um, but our offense went from 27th to 28th. <laughs> what? So even though we won six more games. Yeah. Our offense actually finished worst in the NFL. Wow. And here's the thing, Hats. Yeah. Here is who was on that offense, okay? Yeah. Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, Mike Irvin, Daryl Johnston, yeah. all right? The first three are Hall of Famers, mm -hmm. okay? The fourth one was a Pro Bowler. I was on that mm -hmm. offense. I made the All-Decade team. <laughs> Mark Tuane, oh, okay, is, yeah. was on that offense. Pro Bowl offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. Nate Newton was on that offense. Mm -hmm. Pro Bowl offensive guard. Mm -hmm. Kevin Gogan was on that offense. Pro Bowl offensive guard. That's unbelievable. We had eight Pro Bowlers on that offense yeah. in 19... Not yet, okay? Yeah. But yeah. believe me, we're all good. Yeah. We just hadn't made it yet. Yeah. Eight guys on that offense who became Pro Bowl players, and we finished last in the league in total offense. Wow. Now, how does that happen? Good that's coaching. Yeah. That's okay. Coaching. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. That's coaching. Mm -hmm. That goes to show you how much of a difference one guy can make. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, after that season, we were desperate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's when we went out and hired Norv Turner, mm -hmm. who, um, you know, anybody who likes football knows that name. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, he became our offensive coordinator for three years. And uh, then he went on to become a head coach elsewhere. And more than one, he was a head coach for the Washington Redskins for a while. Okay. Uh, he was a head coach at the Cleveland Browns for a while. And I think he still coaches in football in some capacity. Okay. But he's you know, been a head coach and an assistant coach for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. But at that time, yeah, that was his first chance to be an offensive coordinator. And he came in, man, and that's when everything changed. Yeah. You know, we went from being 28th in total offense to eighth wow. in one year. His first year in 1991 yeah. as offensive coordinator, he mm -hmm. took all this talent 
and we just got a whole lot better. We yeah. won 11 games that year. We won 11 and five. Mm-hmm. Went to the playoffs. Won a playoff game. He was the catalyst. Wow. What, what's know? I don't like. What's the difference? Is he, he sees the talent he has and, and molds his offense around it? Or yeah. Is it really? And he's just better at calling plays. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. he's just better play caller, mm-hmm. better at reading defenses, better at making up a game plan. All of it. All of it. You know, more experienced. Mm-hmm. You know, just everything, man. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, coaching is huge, right? Oh my God, guys. You know, to go twenty places mm-hmm. in the NFL standings in any category in yeah. one year is a quantum leap. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to go from being worst in the league to being top ten offense. Mm-hmm. You know, in one year to jump 20 in, spots. In NFL, that's unbelievable, yeah. man. That never happens, yeah. man, <laughs> in any category. You yeah. know, that's so that was remarkable. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was, man, that made a big, big difference. That's when things really kicked in, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, from that point on, you know, we became a playoff team and then wound up uh, being repeat Super Bowl champs in uh, 92 and 93. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's, Played with some phenomenal players in Dallas, yeah, man. That's great. Unbelievably talented teams. Yeah, and you got hurt. You got hurt right in one year. Yeah. I got hurt in 1993. Yeah, yeah. I tore my ACL, my anterior cruciate ligament, in mm-hmm. my right knee in 1993. Okay, uh, in December. So uh, yeah, that was a career. That was a season-ending injury. And um, see, so, yeah, I missed. You know, we had about. I got hurt with about three games left. Okay. So uh, yeah, I missed. Uh, the playoffs that year, and I did not play in that Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. But that was your second Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the first, the, the '92 season, we went 13 and three. Yeah. And uh, we played the Bills in the Super Bowl in uh, Pasadena, California, in the mm-hmm. Rose Bowl, yeah. and we won that game. Yeah. So the following year, we went back to the Super Bowl. That year, it was in Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, I think we went 11 and five that year, and. Uh, Beat the Buffalo Bills again Mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. But yeah, I was injured. Like I said, I I got hurt against the Vikings uh, like in week 13. Uh, So I was done. So I had to get, you know, uh, an ACL reconstruction. Yeah. And then uh, that was my only, fortunately, my only major injury uh, in in pro football. Is it the only time you missed games or missed this? Um, It wasn't the only time I missed games. It was the only time. It was my only serious injury. Mm -hmm. It It was the only time I had a major surgery. Yeah. Uh, at, at any level of football, mm-hmm. thankfully. Yeah. And that at that time, you know, that was about an eight-month mm-hmm. project. Yeah. You know, from the time I got operated on until the time I was back playing was eight months. Wow. So it took the whole off season. That's it. That's... I, I got back just in time for the next season. Oh wow! When you're ready to go, you mean you got back like into shape and everything ready to go? It took it took about eight months at that time to rehab that injury. Wow. So when you're a kid, this is a question I have about. Uh... Because, I mean, you won the Super Bowl twice. You played in the Super Bowl once. So it all comes to, like, you know, you get there. It's like a dream come true. Was the goal to win the Super Bowl someday or was to to play football, um, make money? All the above. Okay. So that was part of it. You wanted to win the Super Bowl, too. Oh, certainly. Amazing. You know what it's like. Yeah. You know, if you're in a sport, whatever the sport is, whatever yeah. level you're at, yeah. you, know, you want to win. Yeah. You want to be on the championship team. Mm-hmm. It's a rarity. You want to know what it's like. You want to know what it's like. You know for I mean, sure. that's the, that's the pinnacle. Yeah. You know, you want to, in any field, you know, if you can, you want to get to the apex. You want to know what it's like. You know, and then all good <laughs> things come with it. Yeah. You know, like, so uh, really? and, you know, after my first year, I didn't think I was ever going to see it. Yeah. You know, we went right. one in fifteen. Yeah. And I just, you know, you're thinking, wow, this this is ever going to happen. Yeah. You know. But then, like I said, we just consistently got better every year. You know, we went seven and nine, then we went eleven and five, and then you know, sure enough, man, we went thirteen and three in nineteen ninety two. We just you know kept improving every mm-hmm. year and managed to win two in a row. Wow! And then um, in nineteen ninety four, mm-hmm. uh, we were trying to do something that had never been done, mm-hmm. which was uh, win uh, three Super Bowls in a row. This never been done. No. Okay. And uh, actually got one game away. Yeah. Uh, made it to the NFC Championship game that mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. Uh, and lost okay. to the 49ers. Okay. And then they went to the Super Bowl and they beat San Diego. <laughs> no, it's close. Uh, but then sure enough, you know, the following year, Dallas went back and won it again. Mm-hmm. Um, I was not on that team. Mm-hmm. Um, after the 1994 season, as you know, I left as a free agent. Mm-hmm. At that point, free agency existed in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So I, um, I left as a free agent. Mm-hmm. But they actually went back in 95 and won it again. Mm-hmm. 
So at that time, um, they were the only team to ever win three Super Bowls in four years. That's incredible. And you know, even the one year we missed, we were one game away. Mm -hmm. So that was quite a run. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a dynasty. Yeah. You know, it never happened before. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, that was remarkable. That you is know, remarkable. To actually be a part of something that had never happened before in pro football. Yeah, that is remarkable. And you know, to wind up, you know, playing with all these great players. Yeah. And, you know, it was it was really after your first year, you're just thinking that's not going to happen. Yeah. Do you remember that video I gave to you of Mark Tuane? And he's uh, he comes up to my video camera and he sticks his his ring in it from his third Super Bowl and he goes, "Step, this is because you're greedy. You didn't get one of these because you're greedy." <laughs> Ah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All life, a lot of things are a trade off, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was just happy to have two. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, yeah. after you get two, you're going, hey, man, how many more are you going to get? Well, right? so how does that, how do you, like, what has, what, what's the goal after that? It can't, I mean, it's obviously more, but is it like amount of years to play? Like, how, like, yeah, and to get back. You know, I mean, to get back to the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl again, I guess yeah. so, right? Like every season and, is a disappointment. And, yeah. And everything else you just said, you know, yeah. just to stay in the game yeah. and to keep succeeding and mm -hmm. to keep playing well and to keep earning money and, you know, mm -hmm. just to kind of, you know, you realize even at the time that it's going to be a short lived thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, even for myself, you know, I wanted to play in 13 years, mm -hmm. which was, you know, when I came into the league, I was just hoping to make it 10 years because mm. that's a long time. That's a huge career. You know, the average career is three to four seasons. Yeah. And so, you know, I figured, man, 10 years is a long time. Mm. If I can make it to 10 years, that'll be an accomplishment. Mm. Anything after that's gravy. Yes. You know, we'll just see how it goes. Mm. And so the fact that I wound up playing 13 years, you know, that was remarkable. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I'm just thankful I was able to stick around that long. Yeah, that's an incredible accomplishment all on um, its own. And, you know, it's just, yeah, you get to a point where, you know, you know it's going to be short-lived. Mm -hmm. And so you just want to do it as long as you can. You know, yeah. you kind of treat every year like it might be your last because mm -hmm. it might be. Yeah. You know, you see guys, right, who it's are there and then they're gone. Gone the next day. It's like the war, man. Bam, where'd that guy <laughs> go? Another guy's yeah. right in the place. Some new guy. Him, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the thing. You know, there's always some guy breathing down your neck who wants your job. Yeah. You know, everybody is replaceable. So mm -hmm. it's like, all right, you know, I'm just going to do what I have to do to stick around here as long as I can. Yeah. You know? So you leave, you leave the Dallas Cowboys and your life changes forever because you meet me. <laughs> good things come to those You're who right. wait. It was definitely a good trade-off instead of the Super Bowl. Yeah, I got me. Hi. <laughs> How are you? So you go to a team, uh, that, which is awesome. It's a good feeling, right? You've come, from, uh, you've come from the Dallas Cowboys. You've got two Super Bowl rings now. You're a pro bowler and here you come to a new team. And uh, how does that, like, do you, obviously you fit in right away. That's almost a silly question, right? They're all happy to see you. But good group of guys yeah yeah i didn't really know that many people on the mm -hmm. team yeah uh, i think i knew one guy yeah that's, a little bit that's different right so it was a really a brand new scene but i didn't have to go far you know mm -hmm. i just went from dallas to houston mm -hmm. so you know still living in texas so that yeah. was kind of the same you know yeah, yeah. but uh yeah different team different conference mm -hmm. that was different mm -hmm. uh at the time you know that's uh the houston Oilers were in the afc yeah so kind of, you know, start playing different teams, different mm -hmm. conference, different division, you know, yeah. so you're playing against different personnel, mm -hmm. you know, that's um, going to be a challenge too, right? Like, cause I mean, you start to realize who people are and yeah. stuff and how they, how they play the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, a whole different setup. Um, and what's funny is, uh, the year before I got to the Oilers, they had the worst record in the league. <laughs> You were the magic pill. So bring him in. It was just it was kind of like Dallas again, mm -hmm. you know. Like I went to Dallas in '89. They had the worst record in the league the year before, and so I went to the, the Oilers in '95. And mm -hmm. the year before, they were two and fourteen. Mm -hmm. So you know they needed help. Yeah. So they signed me as a free agent, mm -hmm. um, and that was a big deal because mm -hmm. you know to be able to take advantage of that was significant because mm -hmm. you know. There was no free agency in the NFL until 1992. Okay. And that changed things in a big way financially mm -hmm. yeah. for players. Uh, that was something that the union had been trying to acquire for years mm -hmm. and had been fighting the owners to attain. Mm -hmm. And finally, through the courts, got it in 1992. Mm -hmm. And so I finally got my chance to really capitalize on it in 1995. Mm -hmm. And because once free agency became the policy, mm -hmm. salaries really started to skyrocket. 
And so that's so just real quick. That's the end of your contract. You have a year of free agency, which you can make yourself available to other teams. And if you don't, your contract expires. Oh, it's, it's over. You know, so you're, yeah, you sign a contract that's for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And you know, if you play all those years, yeah. if you're a certain age, okay, you become a free agent. Uh, you okay. have to be a certain. You have to have been in the league for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And and I had been. Okay. Um. You know. I, uh, I, I played for Dallas for six years okay. and then signed as a free agent with the Oilers. Mm-hmm. So that was a big deal, man. It was a chance to take a kick at the can at free agency mm-hmm. and really make a whole lot of money. Yeah. I mean, you know, way more money than guys been making just a few years prior. Really? And, you know, more money than I ever dreamed I'd make as a kid growing up. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. When I was a kid growing up, one, you know, I knew you could make good money playing ball, yeah, yeah. but no one at that time envisioned those kind of salaries that yeah. it wound up being. Until free agency, yeah. bam. That's yeah. awesome. Interesting, yeah. So um, signed a four-year contract with the Oilers. Mm-hmm. Went down there. Uh, <laughs> never had a winning season there. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't make the playoffs during any one of those four years. Mm-hmm. Um, played in three different cities in four years. Right, that's tough. Had three different line coaches in four years, Mm -hmm. two different offensive coordinators in four years. I think played in front of maybe three sellouts in four years. Wow, that's that's different. (laughs) But like you said, it's got to meet you. Yeah, that's here we are today. There's a reason for everything. (laughs) Silver lining to every cloud. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, did not have a lot of team success, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. uh, with the Oilers. But uh, still, you know, Went seven and nine mm-hmm. uh, in 1995, and then went eight and eight three years in a row. So never had a winning season, yeah. never been to playoffs, but you know did not play on bad teams. Yeah, just yeah. played on average teams mm-hmm. every year. Yeah. You know, but played with some phenomenal football players. Right, hugely talented guys. Yeah. Played next to Bruce Matthews for four years. You know, one of the greatest offensive linemen in the history of the league. Yeah. No one in league history has made more Pro Bowls than Bruce Matthews. That's unbelievable. What is it, like 15 or 14. something? 14. Wow. Most in history. And played at all five positions too, right? Like Yeah, I regular. believe so. Like he moved around quite played a bit. Played tackle, guard, center. Yeah. You know, legitimately one of the best of all time. Mm. You know, if you count up the best guards in NFL history on one hand, mm. Bruce Matthews is without question wow. on that list. Unbelievable. You know, yeah. yeah, I think he is tied. That's a good trivia question, Hatch. You know mm. who he's tied with for most Pro Bowls in history of the NFL? Oh, is it a kicker? Is it uh No. It's not a kicker. It's a defensive lineman. A uh, defensive lineman that would make the Pro Bowls. And it's an old timer, too. Ed Jones. So it's not a really... Uh, easy Merlin Olson. Oh, Merlin Olson, the, the uh, Little House in the Prairie. Merlin exactly. Olsen. Yeah. Yeah. Him. The yeah. Uh, from the fearsome foursome, mm-hmm. the great defensive line of the Los Angeles Rams back oh, wow. in the sixties. He made fourteen Pro Bowls. Yeah. That's... Merlin Olson and Bruce Matthews. Wow. And I, there might somebody else might have done it since then. Mm-hmm. Maybe Charles Woodson. You know the defensive back. Yeah, who won like Super Bowls everywhere. Who he played went. forever. Yeah. He may have tied that record. I'm wow. not sure, but he did go to quite a few Pro yeah, Bowls. Yeah, but that's that's it, man. There's you know? some crazy genetics out there, man. Like just yeah. like the, the Matthews family, right? Unbelievable. How do you explain all that talent? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of like you know, growing up like you did, like sort of in a factory or not a factory, but a in a, in a, a path that's lit for you, right? Yeah. So all of them have that as well, and then they make the best of it. They take three advantage generations. Of it. It's incredible. You know, the, the father played uh, for the 49ers mm-hmm. back in the 50s. That's crazy. And then his two sons played, Clay Matthews and yeah. Bruce played, you know, Bruce played 20 years, Clay played 19. That's unbelievable. You know, um, Clay Matthews played for the Browns primarily. Mm-hmm. So when I was a kid growing up, I watched him on TV for years and years. <laughs> that's you know? cool. And uh, yeah, now, you know, they got uh, like three kids playing. Mm-hmm. You know, Clay's got a kid, uh, Pro Bowl, right. uh, outside linebacker. Yeah. Uh, Bruce has two kids playing. You know, one of them was a guard. The other one's a starting left tackle for the Falcons. That's crazy. You know, I mean, it's just they keep going on and on, three generations in a row, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, but um, Steve McNair was a quarterback down there on the Oilers, mm-hmm. a guy who wound up being NFL MVP right. of the whole league, yep. you know, eventually. Yeah. Uh, blocked for Eddie George, one of the, phenomenal yeah. running back. You know, guy, Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. Uh, I remember that we drafted him in 1996. Mm-hmm. And he came into the league and had something like seven or eight a thousand yard seasons in a row. 
That's incredible. You know, yeah. I mean, he just came yeah. into the league and started killing. Yeah, he's right? a beast, man. Oh, oh. just, yeah, he tremendous football yeah. player. Yeah, you know? for sure. So played with some great players down there, just, you know, never really had yeah. any team success. Mm -hmm. So once my four-year contract with the Oilers expired, mm -hmm. I was a free agent again. Ten years. You have already played ten years at this point. Yeah. Wow. And so um, I signed with Dallas. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to Dallas and played three more years mm -hmm. and then retired. And it was uh, when you got there, it was, I mean, like Daryl Johnson was still there, right? Yes. Aik, Troy Aikman was still there. Yes. Oh, that's, that's awesome. You're going back, right? Doesn't that feel great? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Mike Irvin was still on the team. Yeah, he can get your um, uh, Super Bowl rings out again, put them on. <laughs> and, 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 and reminisce about what it used to be like to win. Yeah. Because oh, we never did again. Really? <laughs> yeah, we went eight and eight okay. in... Uh, in 1999. You had a lot of eight and eight years. I had four in a row. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And then the you bottom. You win some, you lose some, kid. <laughs> hey, you play long enough, you know, yeah, you'll experience all of it. You did experience all of it. You played 13 years. You know, you have some great years, average years, and some horrible years. That's life, I mean? man. Totally. Ups some downs, <laughs> yeah. right? But that yeah, I, <clears throat> we, we did make the playoffs in yeah. 1999. Even though we were 8-8, eight and eight, yeah. we did make the playoffs as a wild card yeah. and lost. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, at least that was one more chance to experience a playoff game. Okay. But that's what's kind of funny, you know. Like, I played 13 years. Mm -hmm. My last season was 2001. Mm -hmm. But I never had a winning season after 1994. Wow. And you just got to stay motivated by dusting off your Super Bowl ring <laughs> and looking at your uh, Pro Bowl trophies. There you go. So, wow. yeah, you know, it's just, you know, yeah, but that's the thing. You know, it's, you know it's going to be short-lived. Yeah. And you see guys, you know, one minute they're there, the next minute they're gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they don't have time, really. You know, it's just, they usually in the form of an injury. Yeah. You know, like. Yes. Like Daryl sure. Johnston, you know mm -hmm. I mean? He's out playing, and then, you know, one play, you know, he cracks a vertebrae in his neck, and he's yeah. done. Yeah. You know, and then same thing with Mike Irvin. Yeah. You know, Mike Irvin in 1999, you know, he's one of the best receivers in the league. Yeah. You know, he's in his 11th, 12th year. Yeah. And just, you know, one play, it doesn't look like anything. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look as the most nondescript play in the world, man. Mm -hmm. Guy falls on him, he breaks a bone in his neck. Never plays again. Yeah. You know, uh, following year, you know, Troy Aikman's just running out of bounds. Guy hits him. You mm -hmm. know, he hits the ground, has another concussion. Boom. Done. Forever. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, just yeah. guys don't see it coming. No. You know, it just happens. It is. It's... So my last couple of years, the bottom kind of fell out there. Mm -hmm. in, in 2000 and 2001, we went 5-11. and 11. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of disappointing. Was your last game you ever played in Detroit? The one you went to. I thought so. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I yep. went to that game. Yeah, for sure. I was impressed you made it, Hats. Yeah. That was quite a trip from yeah. Ottawa. Yeah, so so that jersey that hangs in the podcast studio in the back, okay? So I had that on my wall, pinned to my wall before. And I'm like, oh, it's Steph's last game. I got I got him going, and I'm wearing his jersey. <laughs> so I put it on, and I'm like halfway through the game. I'm sitting there in the, whatever, the Pontiac Silverdome. Yeah. And the guy behind me taps me on the shoulder, and he goes, hey, buddy, you have two thumbtacks in your uh, in your sweater, <laughs> in your jersey. I forgot to take the thumbtacks out, and I was wearing them. <laughs> that was the last game ever in the Silverdome. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That massive yeah, dome it was crazy the lions played yeah that was the last game ever played in that stadium wow yeah that's uh that's amazing so you lived a dream it all happened and uh, another key thing about it because so many people not so many people but of the people who play professional sports uh, especially football a lot of them have to have jobs after right and you've you've managed to not i mean just to to do whatever you want for how many years is it now 17 within years within reason within reason yeah yeah, coming up on sixteen years, and that's yeah. that's amazing, right? Like that's that was the dream from from being a little kid, right? No backup plan. You don't have, you know, nothing else. Honestly, that that was the plan. You know, like that was always my intent yeah. was to play football long enough to just retire yeah. and to not have to have another job. That's amazing. That was really I, there was never anything else I wanted to do mm -hmm. professionally. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I. There's some other things I have done since I retired that required, you know, a pretty decent amount of work, but, you know, I didn't get paid for them. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like volunteer work, yeah, you know, yeah. like public advocacy work. Okay. 
So, which is great though, you know, I mean, that's, you're not you that a slave to the dollar. Yeah. You know, you want to go do something if it interests you mm. and you know, you want to be a spokesperson for any kind of cause mm. or anything, you can devote all the time you want to it because you don't need to get paid for it. That's amazing opportunity. And, and you know, whoever you're doing it for appreciates it mm-hmm. because you know, you're doing it for free. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that, there, there's a, it, it's a great sense of freedom, mm-hmm. you know, to not have to do something after retiring from football just to get a paycheck mm-hmm. you can do something because you want to do it because yeah. you're interested in it and because you are committed to it mm-hmm. and, and you think that it might do some good mm-hmm. that's amazing opportunity and so also while it's happening you must be doing something to sort of make that happen right you can't i mean you have to sort of uh, i guess invest would be the word invest your money in something that like you have to do that while it's happening, correct? Like you can't just keep putting it in the checking account and hoping it's going to work Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. You get a, uh, you know, a, a financial advisor. So you did, you went and got it. Like. And that had been going on you know, my whole career. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you're, e- e- even when I started out, you know, mm-hmm. guys made far less money than they make now. Yeah. But it was still a lot of money yeah. for a young guy And did people time. tell you to do that or did you see them doing it or you thought of it? It's just something everybody does. Okay, so you and you know what? Even it. if you didn't think of it, your agent would tell you to. Okay, if you had a good agent, yeah. if it was worth his money at all, mm. and a lot of those agents even provide that. Ah, okay, that's you know, sense. not all of them. Mm. Uh, mine didn't. He referred me to people. Mm. You know, he, my agent was in Pittsburgh. I had the same agent my whole career, mm. and he's based in Pittsburgh, and um, he kind of you know steered me towards some guys Mm -hmm. who might be able to help me invest money. Yeah, that's smart. But, um, you know, some agents work for huge firms that have their own staffs of financial advisors. Mm -hmm. You know, it comes with the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, my agent didn't work for a huge, well, for a couple of years, he worked for a company like that. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of a brief thing. For most of the time, he just had his own business. Yeah. And so he, um, you know, they would, he would he would help you out with that stuff, but yeah. he didn't actually pay somebody to do it. Okay, you know he just referred me to guys like he had a guy who could do my taxes mm-hmm. for me. You oh, know, that's... and he had a guy. I need he, a guy. He referred me to a couple guys who are financial advisors. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how that worked. But yeah, you know, as soon as you get into the league, yeah, you know, you're 22 years old. You know, and you're making. You know, well, I was making you know hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know. Um, just because I was lucky enough to get drafted, uh, I was first pick in the third round. Mm-hmm. So, you know, fairly high pick. You yeah. know, you're going to make some decent money. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, it's not much compared to nowadays, but back then, you know, yeah. I mean. Yeah, you got to figure out what to do with it pretty quick, man, or, yeah. or it'll disappear. <laughs> right? and, and, you know, sadly, that does happen to some guys. Yep. You know, you see it. Guys just mow through money, mm-hmm. you know, because you're not used to having it. Right. And you don't really get taught in college how to address that mm-hmm. which you, know, you should you, you should mean, in high school right yeah <laughs> ideally yeah you know but you don't it, it's it's because it's such a rare thing mm-hmm. yeah you know, i mean how many you know 22 year olds come out of college and start making a couple hundred grand a yeah. year yeah. in any you know profession that's right it's yeah. very rare mm-hmm. so it's just not something that anybody really thinks about i blew on mine for sure you know <laughs> yeah so you know it's yeah, you know, you're 22 years old, and you look at your guy. You look at your friends, okay, mm-hmm. like your buddies from high school and college mm-hmm. who are, you know, getting out of college at the same time you are, and they're mm-hmm. entering the workforce. Right. Hopefully, telemarketing. Yeah, whatever it might be, and mm-hmm. these guys, you know, they just are looking for a job that might give them two weeks paid vacation mm-hmm. and a company car. Right. You know, and if you get that, you're lucky. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and starting out at you know, base salary, mm-hmm. you know, or shit. I mean, there's people who, you know, you might be making minimum wage somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not lucky. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just felt lucky and felt blessed, you mm-hmm. know, and I, you know, figured, you know, if I, if I could do that long enough, and then the fact that free agency became a reality yeah. and, and salaries just skyrocketed, you right. know, um, I did reach the point, you know, where I was able to, achieve my goal yeah. of so playing you, long enough to make enough yeah. to retire and never do anything else again. How many, how many, how many years do you think that was? So at what point did you hit that? Like a uh, sixth year, you thought you had enough money that if this ended tomorrow, I could, uh, you know, probably after my 10th year. Oh, wow. Okay. That's so that long. I mean, that's when I really felt 
financially secure. Yeah. Because I had just finished my four years with the Oilers, mm -hmm. and that was a very lucrative contract. Okay. Like I said, that was my first real long-term lucrative free agent contract. Okay. And I played out the whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, made a lot of money. And, you know, here's the thing, too. At the time, uh, I was single. I lived by myself. Mm. So I didn't have, you know, a woman in my life. I didn't have any children. Yeah. Well, we so, were dating for a while, but besides that. <laughs> I was, more, I, I was more like your child, actually. <laughs> I got over that man crush. Yeah. I got over that man uh, crush. We uh, were like... We were very like, few do. We, we were like Gregor <laughs> Robertson and uh, Justin Trudeau. <laughs> uh, I was more like your child, than really, than your so, uh, man husband. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't really have a lot of expenses. Yeah. You know, I didn't have, right. you know, a family. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, I just tried to be smart with my money. You yeah. know what I mean? I wasn't buying a... I tried to just have one of everything. Okay. You know, one car, yeah. one house. Kind of like Eldorado. <laughs> For a while, <laughs> that was the one car, yeah. yes. And, you know, just didn't... I tried to avoid the pitfalls that other guys yeah. had to confront. Okay. You know, you're surrounded by it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you see guys who, you know, get divorced mm -hmm. uh, or who... Um, you know, have a lot of kids right, with different right, right. women yeah. or who gamble mm -hmm. or who develop a drug problem mm -hmm. or, you know, just any one of the number of things that can come along and empty your pocketbook. Yeah, you stay away from You those. know, just don't do those things. Mm -hmm. You know, just try to be smart about, you can live, if you're making that kind of money, you can live really well and mm -hmm. save a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. What what you just said in the past like four sentences should just be played to every NFL rookie man you know like avoid these things. I know they have symposiums now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean they didn't have them really as much back then. Yeah, I mean back then it was a little bit more sink or swim. Yeah, you know, and then you had to rely on your agent and mm -hmm. hope that he was a good one. To to and the mine was great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That believe me, that helped me a lot. Yeah. You know, just the fact that I never had to switch agents, mm -hmm. I had him the whole. He was a great that agent, great. man. Yeah. You know, and that was. That for a young guy in my position, mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm. But that's a great thing about going to a school like Pitt, yeah. where you know every year there's a lot of guys coming out playing pro ball, mm -hmm. and so you know all my friends who are older than me that I played ball with, they're coming out. So that's the kind of thing you ask them. Yeah. You know who's yeah, your yeah. agent? Right. Who's a good agent? Mm -hmm. And um, my agent played at Pitt. Okay. Years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, like I mentioned earlier, he was based out of Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's great. And he actually played pro football for a while, too. He was a linebacker for the Oilers and the oh, Patriots wow. back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the kind of thing you can learn at a school like Pitt, where a lot of guys are going pro. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find a good agent mm -hmm. just through word of mouth. You know, if you're an agent in Pittsburgh and you screw some guy over, right. you know, it's going to travel around mm -hmm. and you get a bad reputation. Yeah. But my guy, uh, Ralph Sindrich, mm -hmm. you know, he had an, an excellent reputation. You know, he, he got great contracts for his players. Mm -hmm. uh, he represented a lot of offensive linemen, oh, that's which good. helps. Yeah. So that was, that's part of the battle right there. Just mm -hmm. having a good agent, yeah. you know, and then, you know, I just wasn't stupid with my money. You see guys, you know, who want to uh, get restaurants or bars right. or, you know, guys who want to invest in race horses <laughs> or, you Landed know, just Florida. risky stuff, yeah, you know, like yeah. risky stuff, yeah. you know, stuff that has the capability of going under at any minute. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, I just, I just tried to do basic, safe, conservative things, mm -hmm. you know, and but, you know, the big thing was just playing for a long time. Yeah, you know I mean, if you play long, because like I said, salaries kept going up. Yeah. And, you know, if you're playing well and just making money and not blowing it, mm -hmm. you know, you can have, you can live really well and, and save money and be set when you're done. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be, it breaks my heart when I see some of these guys wind up, like Terrell Owens, mm -hmm. the wide receiver. Yep. You know, he made something like $50 million mm -hmm. when he played football. He's a Hall of Fame wide receiver. Yeah. And, and he came out a few years after he retired and said he was broke. No money. What's he do? How does he get? He signs out of guys probably. Or I don't probably. Yeah. Or a guy like Theo Fleury, mm -hmm. you know, who had a 50, was making $9 million a year. Wow. You know, playing for the Rangers, yeah. who was a, you know, an all-star hockey player who played for, you know, yeah. years and years and winds up broke. Wow. You know? Yeah. And, and you just, you know, you just try to avoid those pitfalls. Yeah. You know what I mean, don't fall into the trap. Yeah. So, and so I was able to do that. Yeah. And, you know, fortunately, you know, just didn't have anything uh, unfortunate happen to me that mm -hmm. way. You know, I didn't. Uh, the big one was just not getting hurt. Yeah. You know, no one has any control over that. Mm -hmm. 
So that was the big one, you know, just staying healthy, staying productive. You know, I, um, in 13 years, I missed 12 regular season games. That's a, so that's pretty good. That's yeah, one a year. You know, I mean, less you're averaging missing less than one game a year for yeah. your whole career. That's pretty good for thirteen for the years. NFL, that's incredible. You know, yeah. And that just kind of some of it's luck, mm-hmm. which never hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, a little luck, I'll yeah. take it any time. Yeah. And then you know, just staying in shape. Mm-hmm. You know, just working hard, staying in shape. Yeah. You know, working out, being serious about it. Yeah. You know, if you get hurt, you know just working hard to rehab and get better, you know, don't screw around. Don't be lazy, you know, just do your job. You know what I mean? You know, that's what everybody expects from you. You know, you're getting paid a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a lot of people depending on you. You know, all your teammates are expecting you to show up and be your best, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's the deal, man. You just got to live up to your end of the bargain. Yeah. I, so, okay. That's amazing. And, uh, I guess from that, it goes to the, the amount of time you played, uh, in the NFL, which is a, a lot, right? And I, I wake up every day with a, short, a sore shoulder and, you know, I get effects from a, a concussion. Like, how does, as a 13 season uh, in the NFL, with so many games at center, how does that, like, do you, how do you, is there physical pain? Is it, uh, how does Occasionally. Because, I mean, we sure. both know guys who have put guns to their chest and, you know, ended their lives because yep. of head injuries and you see guys who can't walk very well and stuff yep. like that. Yep. You see guys who can't remember where they parked their car. Yes. You know. Yeah, I know. That happens all the time. I took a picture of where I parked at the airport and uh, <laughs> so that I, I can't remember it. I know. Yeah, it's nuts, man. I'll tell yeah. you, it's yeah. crazy. So it's it's fine. You're okay. You don't have to worry about it. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, amazing. They're fortunate for sure. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, man. That was... Uh, one hour, 37 minutes. That was great, man. Appreciate it. That flew it. by. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah, that did fly by, didn't it? And we could yeah. probably go on for three more hours. It's but that was, uh, that was awesome, man. We'll, just well, next right. time we'll talk about ancient Egypt. Yeah, yeah, we really have to, for sure. I'm super interested in it, and, I, <laughs> and I've seen them all. And you're uh, an expert. You're the guy that uh, knows the most about ancient Egypt that I think I know about. Oh, I love it. And uh, also uh, aliens. Yes. And those two, th- two things go together, though, right? Yes, totally. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, next time we'll do that. Thanks, man. Right on.